Hello and welcome to some more Exploring Quadrilaterals. We've had some fun in the previous lessons making quadrilaterals by reflecting triangles. We made the square, the rhombus, two kinds of kite. But hey, did you notice that none of the triangles we reflected ever made a rectangle? Don't you think that's a bit strange? I mean, look at this rectangle here we can see that it's made of two congruent triangles. Today we're going to find another way of making this shape still using triangles. By the end of this lesson, we should be able to use rotation to make a rectangle, define the properties of a rectangle. Let's look at the reflections that we have used and the triangles that we've used. Did you see any rectangles there? Concave kites, convex kites, and a rhombus or two, but not a rectangle in sight. So here's the trick. To make a rectangle, we need to rotate a triangle and not reflect it. Let's take a quick look at what rotation is all about. If we rotate this triangle around one of its vertices, we can create this flower shape. A rotation must always have a fixed point around which the rotation is happening. That rotation didn't get us any closer to making a rectangle though. To get our rectangle, we're going to make use of a right-angled scalene triangle. Let's label it P, Q and R. Now let's mark in all the information we know about triangle P, Q, R. Let's mark each side differently to show that they are all of different lengths. We know that the angle at R is 90 degrees and we can mark angle Q and P differently because they are not equal. So let's mark that on our diagram. Angle R is 90 degrees, angle Q and angle P are different sizes. Now we have chosen the midpoint of line QP to be our point of rotation. So let's find the midpoint of line QP and mark it as point S. So let's fix the triangle at point S and rotate it through 180 degrees. Let's label this new point T. What we have made looks pretty much like a rectangle. To check that this really is a rectangle, let's investigate its sides and angles. So, if I flip the triangle, we see that QR is in fact equal to PT, and we can mark it with two strokes on this side. If we look again, we see that QT and PR is also equal in length. So we can use the same markings to show that this side is equal to this side. That's great so far. Now, that's what we need for a rectangle. So we know what's going on with the sides. So what's the other important thing to consider? The angles. So let's label them so we know what we're talking about. So I'm going to use this cutout to mark the angles from this triangle. We know the angle here is 90 degrees. We know the angle here is a dot. And the angle here is a tick. Let's see what happens when we rotate the triangle. So we see that this angle here is a tick. This angle here is a dot, and this angle is a 90 degree angle. So we can see that these two angles are equal, and these two angles are equal. And lastly, these two angles are 90 degrees. For a rectangle, we need all four angles to be 90 degrees. Now can we get that? Have a look at these angles here at P and these angles here at Q. 
can we find out if they add up to 90 degrees? Now, do you remember that the angles of a triangle adds up to 180 degrees? Then this would mean that the tick plus the square plus the dot is equal to 180 degrees. But we know that the square is 90 degrees because we're working with a right angled scalene triangle. Now if we know that this is 90 degrees, it must mean that the dot plus the tick is 90 degrees as well. So this must mean that the tick plus the dot must equal to 90 degrees. Did you get that? Let's write it all down. A dot plus the tick plus a 90 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. This must mean that the dot plus the tick is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees, which gives me 90 degrees. So, if we look here, we know the dot plus the tick is equal to 90 degrees. At angle P, we have the dot plus the tick. This means angle P is 90 degrees. And let's mark that down. And if you look at Q, we also have a dot plus a tick. This means angle Q is also 90 degrees. So this shape is definitely a rectangle. Rectangles can be found in many places around us in the world. Can you see any around you in the classroom now? How about your books? Now let's explore the properties of the rectangle and start with the lengths of the sides. So we can say that QT is equal to RP and QR is equal to TP. In other words, the two pairs of opposite sides are equal to one another. So we know that Q1 is equal to P2 because they both have dots and we know that Q2 is equal to P1 because they both have the ticks. We also discovered that the whole angle at Q is 90 degrees and the whole angle at P is also 90 degrees. We also know that the angle at R is 90 degrees and the angle at T is 90 degrees because we've been working with a right angle scalene triangle. So the next property of the rectangle that we found is that all four angles are equal to 90 degrees. Let's now have a look at the diagonals. Our first diagonal is drawn from P to Q. Our second diagonal is drawn from R to T. I can show that these two diagonals are equal to one another. How? Well, if I take this cut out of the triangle and rotate it around point S, we see that the diagonals are equal and S is the midpoint of both diagonals. So we can say that in this rectangle, we know that PQ bisects RT. This means that this bit here is equal to this bit and this bit is equal to this bit. Look again at the shape we have. I want to know if the diagonal PQ bisects this angle here at Q. If I place this triangle here, I'm trying to see if this little angle here is the same as this angle. And when I flip the triangle, we see that no, the angle with the dot is bigger than the angle with the tick. Let's see if this is true for these angles here at P. If I place the triangle, we've got this angle, which is the dot. If I flip the triangle over, we see that this dot is still bigger than the tick. So we can say that in this rectangle, the diagonals do not bisect the angles. Do the diagonals bisect each other at 90 degrees? No. These two angles are much smaller than these two angles over here.
Now, let's take a careful look at the number of lines of symmetry that the rectangle might have. Remember, to find out if something has a line of symmetry, we have to look for a line over which, if we fold two sides onto one another, they fit perfectly. I have a paper cutout of the rectangle here to make our folding easier. Look first and predict how many lines of symmetry do you expect? So we see this is a line of symmetry. Let's try folding now QR onto PT, like this. Do you see that this is also a line of symmetry? So now we know that the rectangle has one and two lines of symmetry. Let's recap what we did. The rectangle was created by rotating the right angle scaling triangle PQR around a fixed point in the center of one of its sides. We found that this rectangle is a special quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of opposite sides equal, with all four vertex angles equal to 90 degrees, the diagonals are equal and they bisect each other. There are also two lines of symmetry in the rectangle. Here are a few shapes. Which of them would you say, by looking at them, are rectangles? That was easy enough. You should have found that these two are both rectangles. Did you recognize that this one is also a rectangle? A square is a special kind of rectangle because it does have opposite sides equal and four 90 degree angles at the vertex. Here is something for you to do as a task. Make a table to compare the properties of the square, the rhombus and the rectangle. How many properties do they have in common? Join us next time as we explore another rare kind of quadrilateral. Until then, Salani.